And the problem is, where are you getting this free will stuff in a materialistic universe in which you're just a random assemblage of atoms? Like, where is this free will coming from? Where do you get that? And how do you square that with a materialist version of reality? Yeah, I think that the best proof of God, I've always said this, I think the best proof of God to me is our own, is sort of a Cartesian notion that you are a thinker, you are a being. I can that acknowledge has, myself in right, my world. You are a self, right? You're not mm -hmm. just a random assemblage of stuff that wakes up new every morning. And that if you have a hamburger, you're a different person than you were one minute before because you just put some new stuff in your body, right? right. To hear Ben Shapiro describe the materialist worldview as meaning we are a random assemblage of atoms shows a staggering ignorance of evolution. I can't imagine anybody who understands the fundamentals, the basics of evolution, understanding the processes involved, understanding the history that spans billions of years using the term random assemblage of atoms. And there's really no excuse for it. Ben Shapiro has talked about reading books by Sam Harris. Well, here's another book that he should read by Richard Dawkins, The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution. Now, obviously, Dawkins is an outspoken atheist, uh, anti-religious. He wrote The God Delusion. But in this book, it is the perspective of a professor of evolutionary biology. It is not an anti-religious book. And in fact, in one of the chapters, he presents a what-if scenario. If there is a designer to life, it was done more of a chemist than a building construction architect. So it's an excellent book. And in a matter of days, you can gain the greatest perspectives and discoveries of somebody who spent a lifetime in evolutionary biology. And with that knowledge, he would no longer be using this term random assemblage of atoms. And through this knowledge, he can understand our origin and how we got to be thinking beings and have this knowledge from a perspective of science rather than a perspective of myth. And now I'm going to get into uh, detail about some of the other things he says about who we are, what we are, in relation to time and in relation to composition of our bodies. Not just a random assemblage of stuff that wakes up new every morning and that if you have a hamburger, you're a different person than you were one minute before because you just put some new stuff in your body, right? right. So yesterday, this guy woke up who was Fred. This morning, he woke up and he was George and then he ate a hamburger and now he's Ralph. Uh, once again, we get into this silly notion random assemblage of atoms. So he's talking about time. So are we different than we were yesterday? When we got up this morning, are we different than when we got up yesterday morning? And yes, we are slightly different, but we're talking about a small percentage of time. So we're talking about a small uh, difference, but let's expand this percentage of time. Let's talk about the difference between somebody who's 10 years old and somebody who's 20 years old. Now think of it this way. Somebody wakes up at 20 years old. Are they, are they the same person as when they woke up being 10 years old? Now, obviously they're not the same person. Uh, we're talking about the difference between a boy and a man, a girl and a woman, a 10 year old child, a 20 year old adult. Obviously, these are different people. And once that child becomes an adult, that child's gone. You can't sit down and have a conversation with that child anymore. That child is now an adult. So we talked about a decade. We talked, talked about 10 years. What is a day? A day is part of that 10 years. I mean, this reminds me of uh, arguments of creationists against evolution where they say, oh, I believe in microevolution, but I don't believe in macroevolution. Well, if you believe in microevolution, then yes, you believe in macroevolution because all macroevolution is, is an accumulation, an aggregation of all these tiny changes over time. To put it in another perspective, 
If you believe somebody can walk five miles in a day, you can believe that they can walk 50 miles in 10 days. So are we different than when we got up yesterday? Yes, we're slightly different. Ben Shapiro wants to uh, talk about this fantasy where we have this image of ourselves that's never changing and eternal. That's simply not reality. We live and die during life. We are not static beings. We are dynamic. The child becomes an adult. Life events change us. Things happen that make us look at things differently. Hopefully with each year we get wiser, we grow. But with the years, with the decades, certainly those things do change us. Now I wanted to uh, get into more detail about what he said about the composition of our bodies. If you have a hamburger, you're a different person than you were one minute before because you just put some new stuff in your body, right? right. Are we a different person if we eat a hamburger? And let's put some cheese on that and make it a cheeseburger. We're, we're going to do a little upgrade there. Well, slightly. I mean, it's nutrients. Hopefully we're not hungry anymore. Hopefully we can now focus on uh, other things. Imagine not eating for two days and then getting that cheeseburger. Is that going to affect uh, the way you're thinking, what your priorities are, what's, what's on your mind? Absolutely. And obviously this food has uh, nutrients and you're going to feel the effect of that. Um, hopefully that'll help you think clear and, and put you in a better mood. But when we talk about eating things and putting things in a stomach, obviously everything regarding our personality, our thoughts, our mental strengths and weaknesses, our mannerisms, sense of humor, everything that makes up who we are, it's not in the stomach, it's in the physical brain. Now, the stomach affects the brain because it breaks things down and through our blood system, uh, these chemicals are distributed, so our brain is affected by what we put in the stomach. But let's make a more uh, direct route. So let's talk about this scenario. Instead of eating a cheeseburger, we take somebody, we open their skull, and we put the cheeseburger directly in there with their brain, and then we screw the top back on. Now, is that going to affect the way somebody is? Is that going to change them? Yeah, they're going to be seriously messed up. Now, what did we do? We changed the chemical composition of what's in their skull. Yes, we are the physical brain. If Ben Shapiro seriously thinks that our chemical composition makes no difference upon who we are, then I offer him the following challenge. Before you go on an interview, before you get in front of a uh, college auditorium, have six beers. You're, all you're doing is changing the chemical composition with, within your body. So go ahead and have those six beers. Now, obviously what's going to happen is uh, his thinking is definitely going to be altered. Uh, his performance is definitely going to be altered. So we, we know this and he has to know this. So why is he saying these silly things like what we put in a body, what our chemical composition is, has no effect on our personality, our, our thinking, uh, the way we behave, the, the way we think. We all know that they do. Uh, think about somebody with diabetes where their blood sugar gets way off. Uh, that can completely change them and they might actually lose control of, of what they're doing and, and lose control of their actions. And then you bring that blood sugar back and now it's okay. Now, they, now they've recovered. Now they're, they're in control of their actions, which is how our court system defines free will. And this is how uh, ben Shapiro describes free will. So what was the difference between this person not being in control, not having free will, and then having what our court system would determine as free will? Well, what do we mean by when we say blood sugar level? Well, we're talking about chemicals. We're talking about, once again, composition of the body. We know what happens when there's chemical imbalance within our skulls. We know what happens with brain 
damage. We have mapped out the areas of the brains that are responsible for different functions such as motor function, speech, math, all these different things. Realizing that we are the physical brain, which is true, that doesn't mean you're subscribing to some crazy leftist, progressive, liberal party and a bunch of political uh, views and anything like that. It simply means you have the wits to recognize reality and you have enough maturity to accept it. This fantasy world of Ben Shapiro, where we have this static, eternal version of ourselves, is simply not rooted in reality. It simply comes from silly myths. And if people want to subscribe to that, I guess it's fine. But at least learn something about evolution, at least when you're talking about it, at least have a somewhat more intelligent conversation. Now, Ben Shapiro has also tried to say, well, if it's true that we, if we are this bag of atoms, if we are this assemblage of atoms, well, then it's just like we're a bag of garbage. Well, that is complete nonsense. And I wouldn't say that the uh, Torah, the Old Testament, really gives a lot of value to human life when you read it. So I'm not really sure he should be preaching about the value of human life. But obviously, our lives have value. And as Neil deGrasse Tyson put it, we're related to each other biologically. We're related to the earth chemically. We're related to the universe atomically. We're in the universe and the universe is within us. So be the best bag of atoms that you can be. This is Jim Wall. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Cisco, do we have to leave all our good friends now? Only until next time, Pancho. Adios, amigos. <laughs>